So now we're searching for the magic frequency. And we start with 100 hertz, and we look through the microscope to see if anything's happening. We watch for five minutes. Nothing happens. We try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. Because we believed there just had to be a better way. There had to be a better way. And we think we may have found it. I have here two identical tuning forks, both tuned to the note A, the note an orchestra tunes to. These forks are both made to vibrate 440 times per second. We say their frequency is 440 hertz. If I tap this fork, putting little pulses of energy into it, the second fork will also vibrate in sympathy. And if I silence this fork, we just may, may hear the other singing its tone. We say that I'm inducing a sympathetic resonant vibration in the second fork. It only works because both forks are tuned to the exact same frequency. Now many of us have seen this very charming young man on the internet who shatters crystal glasses with his powerful voice. But if you watch him carefully, you'll see that first he taps the glass with his finger and listens. The glass sings its natural resonant pitch. Then he takes a deep breath and sings a loud, long note. He induces a resonant vibration in the crystal glass. The vibration grows larger and larger and larger until the glass is shattered. On the other end of the scale, we have a giant bridge made out of concrete and steel, a suspension bridge, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Cars and trucks and buses are going over it every day. And unfortunately, where they built this bridge, there was a steady wind blowing across it. And one day, this wind induces a small vibration in the bridge, hardly noticeable. But the frequency of the vibration matches the resonant frequency of some part of the bridge. And the vibration gets larger and larger and larger until the bridge collapses into the river below. A destructive resonant frequency. So on one end of the scale, we have a giant concrete and steel bridge destroyed by resonance. And on the other, we have a small crystal glass shattered. So maybe we could shatter something even smaller, something really small, something you would need a microscope to see. Maybe we could shatter a living microorganism. So maybe we could change a biological living liquid crystal with a special electronic signal. But in order to do that, we would need some kind of device. So we search the US patent database and we find this invention by a physician, Dr. James Bear of Albuquerque, New Mexico. It's called a resonant frequency therapy device and its purpose is to induce a resonant vibration in a living organism or cell. If I put in, say, 100 hertz, out will come 100 pulses per second. If I put in 200 hertz, we'll get 200 pulses. So now we're searching for the magic frequency. And we start with 100 hertz, and we look through the microscope to see if anything's happening. We watch for five minutes. Nothing happens. So we try 101 hertz. We look through the scope for five minutes, and nothing happens. So we try 102, 103, and so on. Over the course of 15 months, we try hundreds and hundreds of frequencies, if not thousands, until we find the magic combination. The answer is you have to have two input frequencies, one low, one high, and the higher frequency must be 11 times the lower. It's what we musicians would call the 11th harmonic. And when we add the 11th harmonic, we begin to shatter microorganisms 
like a crystal glass. These are the first videos taken. We showed these videos to our friends in the biology department. They said they hadn't seen anything quite like it. Seems to be a new phenomenon. These organisms are being shattered by our electronic signals. We now know that cancer is vulnerable between the frequencies of 100,000 hertz and 300,000 hertz. So now we attack leukemia cells. Leukemia cell number one tries to grow a copy of itself, but the new cell is shattered into dozens of fragments and scattered across the slide. Leukemia cell number two then hyperinflates and also dies. Leukemia cell number three then tries to make another cancer cell. The new cell is shattered and the original cell dies. by the name of His Almightiness, that Allah Zawajal, God Almighty, to wash away the bad character and the bad actions that He's not pleased with. And the power of sound is something that can't be imagined. That asking always in these associations and when we go home to be from the people of tafakkur, the people of meditation and contemplation, whatever language People want to call it, it's all the same. There's a light that deposited within the heart of every human being, every creation. And our responsibility on this earth is to nourish that light. And wise men, gurus come to bring the realities of the prophets of the divine. They are like radius, radiuses that emanate from the center. They all have an equal distance to reach to the circumference. So Ammar al-Rasul is that the love of all the Prophets and that their brotherhood, their reality, because everything is symbolic in the circle, that there's only one center, one nucleus, whether all this creation, reduce it to one atom, Adam and so on. This one atom has only one center. It doesn't have five centers fighting over the circumference. And this one center is the source of power. The inside controls the outside. The inside power of the nucleus is sending the energy to the electron. So there's no difference between our form. This form is not the one controlling anything. It's the energy inside. If this energy doesn't come from the heart, the nucleus of our body is the heart. If this energy doesn't come from the heart, this form falls apart and is dead. So then all these spiritual masters and spiritual teachings was to come and emphasize that the heart has to be worked on. The nucleus has to be sort of worked on. That power and that emanation that is emanating in that center is what we have to nourish, that little drop of light that God gave us. And then they come and describe like we're a candle. That God, everybody gave, God gave everybody a candle and lit a temporary light. It was not permanent until you nourish it and light the eternal flame. It means that you can live a life in which you just come, you burn out your candle and you go. Or you come into this world and God destines us for guidance. Through many different avenues we find guidance. When He wants to guide, He guides. And he guides and teaches that this candle is temporary. Don't be lost by the illusion of this, this world and all its fun. Balance your life to have fun and pray and play. But that light within the heart, nourish it. Bring its reality out, strengthen it. So then all spiritual practices begin to teach you, nourish that light. And that nucleus has sent out over time radiuses. Radiuses, what we call Rasul, messengers of, the God, of God Almighty, sends a radius to the circumference and remind them of this nucleus, remind them of their origin, remind them of their source of power. 
For if the electron should think it has its own power, it will be lost, it will leave its orbit. It's actually orbiting around the nucleus because it is the source of power pulling it and attracting it. If the nucleus didn't care for it, it would release its attraction and that electron would go flying out into never, never land. Means that everything of our practices is about that inner core and that inner reality. That when we're sitting and trying to nourish that light, as we ask that we see ourselves in an ocean of light in front of us, to the right of us, to the left of us, behind us, above us, and below, in all six directions, that Ya Rabbi, my Lord, dress me from light. Fill me with your light, fill me with your grace and your majesty and take away my difficulties. And we said before that all the actions of every religion, you know, every action that you do is through your head. So many people pray, many people fast and of all different religions. And that can be through their brain, it's not a gift from God. Because there are terrorists out there who are praying and reading all day long. And that wasn't a gift by God. That was just using their brain. They use their brain, they pick a religion that hmm, maybe accommodates their craziness or whatever their belief is, and they start to do it. And they think through that brain action, they'll get somewhere. But know whom God really loves, and whom He has granted the treasures of all eternity, is one whom he's granted light and love within his heart or her heart. There are many people who pray through their head. All day long they pray, but they're completely dark within the inside. So it wasn't the action that was pleasing to God. It wasn't the label in which what people called themselves, because now everybody is a, a label, everybody has a, has a designer label upon themselves. Allah is not like that labeling people, because that would be like a caste system of different characters of people. But what only contains and what only Allah's interest is that I don't look to your, your form, but I look to the heart of the believer. And that heart should be a heart filled with love and compassion. If the heart has love and compassion, it should speak with a softness, with a loveness, with a good character. That love and compassion should be exemplified with every action that the servant is doing. So it means that whatever practices we do to the outside, the most important to Divinely Presence is what's happening inside. Are you devoid of compassion and mercy and love? Then what's the importance of that label? So then these spiritual programs are to develop the inner reality to nourish what's in that little nucleus in the heart right now. It's like a small little light, a flame. That my Lord, it's a, it's a very precious flame. For if you should yell and scream and do bad things, as if you've blown out that flame. Think of, uh, of the subtlety and Prophet was describing, don't think faith is something just granted. You're always going to have it. At every moment, pray Allah keep you in faith Amen. and increase you in faith. Faith isn't just something you come, it's like you've got a lottery ticket, you'll always have it. Many people leave faith, whatever their faith background is. It's a grant, it's a gift, it's a netmat. They ought to be, if, if this is what I have is faith, then please give me more. What you granted of good character, give me more. What you granted of love, give me more. And then these pious people come into our lives and describe that little flame, nourish it. Be very careful with it. Don't let the bad character and anger and all the desires of this world to extinguish it. Because that's all it wants to do is extinguish the flame and then you become black-hearted, dark-hearted. Everything is like a void, everything is, is negative. Your eyes become like a vacuum of vampiring everything, just swallowing up everything it can. And they come and describe, no, no, Nourish that flame, nourish that light, find practices that will empower that light. And those are usually selfless practices. When you go out and feed people, go out and give to people, go out and be of service to people, 
These gentlemen who are coming here, they're being of service because that's the training. They come, they spend their own money to buy their ticket, whoever can afford it, they come to be of service. Not they're going to get any reward, we don't share in anything. But a life was to be of service, to give, to be selfless. That empowers the flame because that brings a divine light and blessing. Meditate and contemplate. Every night you do a meditation and say, My Lord, what have I done wrong today? Tonight, what did I do wrong today? And take a daily accounting, a daily hisab, that every day, every night, Ya Rabbi, what did I do wrong? And if you're truly honest with yourself, you'll hear many things that were wrong, many things that were done wrong physically with your actions and most importantly with the mouth to people. People talk very rude to people. They talk nice to their mom and they talk bad to everybody else. This is a big anger from Allah If you're good with your mom or your dad, you should talk to everybody like that. And then you have a good khuluq. What Allah love from Prophet khuluq al azim You have a magnificent character. Whatever people do bad to you, you always do something good. And say, so we can find that example not only in the Prophets but in nature. Why well, we have to think we're so great and so big because we have a big head and we understand absolutely nothing? Go to a tree, a fruit tree, kick the tree. And what does it give you? It gives you fruit. The tree gives you fruit. It doesn't take the branch and hit you back in the head. So div Divine is teaching us that be of service, give goodness to everything. Try to find a way in which to continuously nourish the light. Then comes the praising and the meditation. That as soon as I sit and meditate, this importance of sound is not something that can be understood. The prophets of the last day started to bring the reality of sound because they knew the world was coming to its end. So the book of Sayyidina Isa, Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, is called the Injil. It's a spoken. It was not a written message. It was a spoken message. Means that he was signifying the end is coming. And as the end is coming, the word is powerful. The sound is powerful. And Holy Qur'an is a rhythmic book in which to be recited in a rhythmic tone. They have seven qirat, some say up to 14 qirat. Why? Because there's a power. And the last Prophet of Allah Muhammad, Hamd means praise. Mu means the most praised, means the importance of sound. So the last prophets were coming to teach us this world coming to an end, this understanding coming to an end. You're going to reach a technology where you begin to understand your most powerful weapon is sound. And for everything is a sound, what they call vibration. We're playing for them tonight a video that they understood from Tesla on what we call a tuning. In spirituality, they take a pitchfork and they go, and they have another pitchfork next to it for sound tuning. They hit the pitchfork, it begins to make its resonance. Resonance, what we call zikr. It makes a zikr, it makes a resonance, and because of the nature of it is the same, this resonance influences the one they didn't touch and begins to resonate with the same frequency. So, one object can influence the resonance of another object. And that's a piece of metal. What about what God created from His divinely hands and blew onto His Holy Spirit? That what power you have, that when you resonate and you recite and when you, you go to these shaykhs and teachers, they're like a pitchfork. They have been tuned the way Prophet ﷺ wanted them tuned. Their zikr, their resonance is of a certain frequency. As soon as people come into their vicinity, you begin to resonate on their frequency. So then these associations, why do they have chanting? 
Because like, and you'll, if you watch that video on Tesla and a tuning, they're now picking up that a person could hit a glass, hear the frequency, what hurts it's resonating at, and he could mimic it. And he would begin to make a sound and shatter glass. Then they wanted to know the magic frequency they call. They said somewhere between 100,000 to 300,000 megahertz. They found out the cellular level can be influenced. So now they have cells that are sick cells and they can begin to put a frequency and shatter the cell. So they're understanding now. Well, Allah just said, Yusabihu bahamdi. For verily everything is praising me. Means everything has a resonance. Everything has a frequency. If you hit the frequency, you can, you can influence it. They want to use it for weapons. They want to know the frequency of a structure. They pick up the frequency and they put out another frequency to change it at its molecular level and crush it and bring it down like dust. And Holy Quran and the Bible describes the trumpet of Jericho. The Messenger of Allah was taught to go to that village, go to that town, to that castle, circumambulate seven times. He went seven times, seven times. On the seventh time he was ordered by Allah blow your shofar. And he blew the trumpets and immediately all the walls of that kingdom came down. It's in their book. And Allah throughout Holy Quran say hatan wahidatan. It was but one shout and we obliterated everything. It was but one shout and we brought everybody back. Means that the importance of sound is something that can't be imagined. So as soon as you come into the presence of the shaykhs, their, their whole system is moving at a frequency, their light. And this light is everywhere. As soon as you come with your lights into that ocean, you begin to be attuned into their frequency. As they begin to resonate and begin to make the zikr, you come with an open heart and begin to chant, their frequency can begin to match. And that's what Allah قُلْ جَعَ الْحَقْ That when this light of haq is moving, what is it? Zahukan. It will shatter and obliterate every falsehood. So it means that whatever difficulties and badness people come into the association with, the zikr and the chanting, the lights and the enter energies, they are crushing all the badness and bad characteristics until people go away feeling fresh and reformed, re revitalized, that the burden and heaviness was taken off of them until they can put more in the next five minutes as soon as they walk out. <laughs> but at least it was like a shower. You know, uh, taking a shower once you feel good and then you go out back into the material world and get yourself dirty again. But the circles of remembrance, they were like a shower, like a cleansing. Every week they enter into the circle to be washed of all of the bad characteristics. And if there's a real shake there, their vibration will begin to obliterate all of the bad characteristics and begin to make them like they're new and reborn. We pray that Allah expand our understanding and that everybody research a little bit about the importance of sound and what type of influence the sound can make, the resonance can make upon the soul, upon the reality of our entire being, inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha.